The following WCI3 Sports presentation is brought to you by Blue Sky Restoration and Longview Bank. The sounds of college football are back. Tailgate season is upon us. August optimism is high for Illini Nation in year two under Brett Bielema as Illinois looks to take the next step. And Bielema is wasting no time trying to make that happen. Hiring a brand new offensive coordinator, bringing in a transfer quarterback while returning one of the best running backs in the Big Ten, all with eyes of making it back to a bowl game. But plenty of question marks remain and to make that happen. How one of the oldest players in college football is hoping to use experience down under to help the Illini and I get a leg up. This is your Illini Nation kickoff show. Talk to the fans. You know, we, we ready. Illini Nation, let's ride. And with that, welcome to the Your Line of Nation kickoff show. I'm Brett Barons along with Andy Olson and Bryce Beeman. We've got a jam-packed 30 minutes ahead, all devoted to Illinois football. And once again, success this season for the Orange and Blue all starts with the quarterbacks. Tommy's my boy. Uh, he's, he's really confident. You know, he's got that jersey swag. He just got a, hey, how you doing? Like, <laughs> a, little, <laughs> a little bit too much jersey for me, but I mean, <laughs> he's been doing a fantastic job ever since he's come on campus. That's in reference to Syracuse transfer Tommy DeVito, who competed in training camp with Rutgers transfer Art Sikowski to be the starter. Bielema has already told us who will be QB1 for the opener, but he's not making that public until game day. There are actually three Jersey quarterbacks on the roster. True freshman Donovan Leary expected a redshirt this season. Art Sikowski, as we mentioned, the Rutgers transfer, he is fully recovered from two separate injuries after shoulder surgery on his throwing arm and a broken wrist on the other. And this will be Tommy DeVito's final season at college football. Andy. He's the favorite to land the starting spot and says he's ready to prove what he can do after playing in 24 games over three seasons with the Orange. Both guys bring plenty of experience to the table. You just got to enjoy it. You know, I, I am blessed and thankful for the opportunity to be a part of this team and be able to and very excited to see where this team goes and be able to help lead them there. I definitely feel a lot more confident in my arm. Um, I feel great. You know, I can I can throw it how I want to. You know, uh, last year was tough for me and kind of had to know my limitations in a way, but that's there's no more limitations. I can just let it rip now. Tommy, Art, and Donovan are the only three scholarship quarterbacks on the roster. The man behind a new look Illini offense, Barry Lenny Jr. Bielma fired offensive coordinator Tony Peterson after just one season in Champaign and goes with the guy he knows well in Lenny. He was Bielma's tight ends coach at Arkansas. Lenny actually beat Bielema and the Illini last season in Champaign as the OC at UTSA. The Roadrunners were 11th in the country in scoring. Illinois was 115th. Now it's Lenny's job to get the Illini offense back on the map. I do have confidence in, in, in what we're doing uh, and how we're doing it and who we're doing it with. You know, uh, you know listen, there's, I tell the players this today, I mean, listen, there's no, there's no perfect coach. There, um, there's no perfect player. There's going to be flaws. There's going to be mistakes. And it's our job to try to purge as much as that as you can and get together where we play clean football and let them use the abilities they have. I think there's plenty there for us to go out and put together a good offense with. The last time Illinois had a top half Big Ten scoring offense was 2013. If there is one position group, Andy, the Illini I feel great about, it is running back led by all Big Ten Chase Brown. He returns as the bell cow back after rushing for more than 1,000 yards last year. Third all Big Ten. He averaged 100 and a half yards per game. Third best in the league. Add in sophomore Josh McCray and the Illini have a formidable one-two punch. He ran for 549 yards as a true freshman last season, making an early splash with his size at 6'1", 235 pounds. Other names to keep an eye on. Reggie Love the third, along with freshman Aiden Lawfrey and Jordan Anderson as well. But Illinois will no doubt be paced by the dynamic duo of Brown and McCray and Lunny's new high tempo offense. Coach Lunny and his scheme, I love it. Like the running backs, we touch the ball a decent amount. So I mean, I'm liking the new offense that we got. Every single time, you know, we look into the sideline for a signal and then processing that, it's like, you know, we got to think fast, play fast, know fast too, and everything else in the world. I'm joined with Jeremy Warner with the Illini Inquirer. Jeremy, thanks so much for being here today. But 
We have a lot to talk about, a lot on offense. We're going to see maybe a little bit of a quarterback competition going on. Bielma says he knows who the starting QB is. Who, who do you think we're going to see starting on Saturday against Wyoming? Yeah, Bielma won't tell us, but I think every indication is it's Tommy DeVito. The Syracuse transfer was brought here to be the guy. He has a lot of experience. He was here all spring, got most of the first team reps. And from what I've heard, he's gotten most of the first team reps uh, during the fall as well. So, you know, Brett Bielma playing a little poker, hiding his cards close to his vest. But I think he said today even that Art Sikow uh, has handled this well, bringing in the transfer, and he just wants the best what's for Illinois. And I just think Ty, uh, Tommy DeVito just gives him a more dynamic quarterback. He's able to run the ball a little bit better, stronger arm than Art Sikowski. So, and he also just has a swagger to him that I think these players and coaches have really gravitated towards. Who do you think we're going to see as a breakout player, maybe some breakout players this year? I know he broke out last year, but I think Isaiah Williams has another level that he can get to, especially in a different offense. I thought, you know, he should have been used more in Tony Peterson's offense, which is part of the why Tony Peterson is no longer the play caller. I expect Isaiah Williams to get the ball, jet sweeps, handoffs, you know, being in the slot, quick routes. I expect him to get the ball a lot, but also at wide receiver, Pat Bryant, a sophomore who played a lot last year, gives him a bigger body, physical, uh, and also Brian Hightower, kind of a guy we forget about sometimes because 2020. 20 had a good year, led the team with three touchdown receptions in that pandemic shortened year. But he's about 6'4, 220 pounds, and he had a really strong camp. And another guy we forget about, Luke Ford gets a lot of attention at Luke uh, at tight end. But Tip Ryman, a former walk on, they glow about. Uh, he's the same size, kind of looks similar in uh, you know helmet and shoulder pads as Luke Ford. Big physical guy can block, and they seem to think he's, he's coming along as a receiver as well. All right, Jeremy. Well, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. To hear more from Jeremy, tune into your Illini Nation pregame show. We're back for year four. Watch on our digital and social channels. 90 minutes before kickoff for every game home and away. Then after the game, bring up those same pages, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, to watch head coach Brett Bielma's entire postgame press conference live. Time for our first time out, but so much more to come. Illinois head coach Brett Bielma joins us in studio for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Also tonight. You know, I took my shot when it when the door opened, and, you know, it's been history ever since. He's the only married player on the team, but Illini tight end is more than comfortable walking his own path. After tying the knot, he's ready for a breakout. Four captains will lead the Illini out of the field this season. Receiver Isaiah Williams, offensive lineman Alex Palcheski, defensive back Sidney Brown, and linebacker Tariq Barnes. A player vote picked the four guys to represent the team as leaders. And there is a big opportunity available at tight end. Daniel Barker transferred to Michigan State. He'll make the return trip to Memorial Stadium in November. But even with Barker gone, the Illini still have two starting caliber tight ends in Luke Ford and Tip Ryman. Tip is not only juggling football and academics, but is also married as a sophomore. He and his wife Maddie both say it was meant to be. I would never have seen myself like dating somebody for six months and being like, yep. And it's really, really cheesy, but like when you know, you really do know. And Tip knew right away he was interested in Maddie when he got to Illinois as a walk-on from South Dakota. The two met at Weber Street Christian Church in Urbana during a Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting. For the tight end, he was waiting for the first chance to talk to the Illini diver. She was actually dating somebody um, when, I, when I met her, so I was kind of like getting my foot in the door, you know, <laughs> here's, I, here's me, you know, whenever you're ready. So, <laughs> you know, I took my shot when, it, when the door opened and, you know, it's been hi history ever since. The two were married at the same church they met at on March 13th. Finding time to see each other is challenging, with Maddie working as a diving coach at Centennial and for the Fighting Illini, and Tip juggling football and school. But they make the most of their opportunities together. I think that's a big thing is, is just making the most of the little moments you get and being present in, in those is, is a big thing for us. We didn't want to spend any more time apart and we wanted to, we wanted to spend every day that we can together. You never know what days are going to be your last. Being the only married man on the team, head coach Brett Bielma says the former walk-on is playing with more confidence this year and a bigger role on the field. He comes in and talks to me all the time about coaches and married being great. I go, absolutely, uh, <laughs> Tip. Um, for him and who he is and where he's at at that moment, like it helps him kind of solidify himself a little bit, and he's definitely playing really good football. Tip was a walk-on his freshman year but earned a scholarship last fall, adding he's so grateful that the school not only gave him this chance to play, but that coming here also led him to his wife as well. The defense took a huge jump last season under coordinator Ryan Walters, going from 97th scoring defense in the country in 2020 
to 29th last fall. Walters has certainly gained the respect of his players and fellow coaches. He also got paid and a contract extension as a result, making more than a million dollars a year now. This year's group has to replace several guys now in the NFL, including third round draft pick Kirby Joseph, along with undrafted free agents Tony Adams, Jake Hansen, Rod Perry, Owen Carney, and Kalen Tolson. Walters says the key to working new guys into the mix is communication. It's going to take all 11, and all 11 need to be on the same page. Um, and the best defenses I've been around, all 11 speak, and so that's what we're trying to preach, and there shouldn't be any secrets on defense. So um, as long as they're doing that and everybody's on the same page, we'll have a chance. And in the middle of that defense, linebackers and roommates Tariq Barnes and Calvin Hart Jr., who is back fully healthy after flashing in three quarters of the season opener against Nebraska last year before going down with a season-ending knee injury. The North Carolina State transfer says he's ready to roll after the adversity of getting hurt last season. It's a process with everything, and I learned, you know, with that whole process, you know, of getting hurt, just to be patient, you know, don't rush anything. So I've, I've learned just to take this, just take every day as a blessing. Well, we just got to keep working, you know what I'm saying? We just can't be satisfied with what's going on or what we did. You know, we got to be worried about all, only about the future and just keep getting better. And that future that Calvin is talking about is very bright as his defense had a great year last year. Robert Rosendahl from IlliniBoard.com joining me now here in studio. Let's talk about that defense, Robert, where – the base of it, besides one or two players in the depth chart, was truly from that last staff before Brett Bielema got here. And really, this staff has done a good job of building them and helping them reach their potential. Yeah, and it's interesting because they didn't, you know, it's a different scheme. They had defensive ends, not these outside linebackers who are dropping into coverage sometimes. So they were able to fill the gaps last year and, and hopefully can, you know, are looking to do the same this year. What do you make of that consistency for the defense? Getting that same messaging back again, having everyone back from year one as they try to improve in year two. I mean, we've talked about it for decades, it seems, that you know, Illinois for 20 years has been trying something a little different each year. And, oh, maybe we'll add a, a fourth, uh, a fifth linebacker here, two outside, two inside, maybe a floater. Maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do two defensive linemen. Maybe we'll get a new safeties coach. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting how there's been an emphasis on that this year of, like, we're going to stay with this. We're going to stay with these schemes. We're going to stay with these coaches, and we're going to keep moving that way. I would say on social media, specifically on Twitter, you have your finger on the pulse of the fan base. What have you made on just overall the fans' reactions to everything we've talked about? I think there is definitely more fan buy-in than, say, uh, Tim Beckman after his first year. It was a 2-10 and ten year. You know, Lovey Smith was a different kind of animal because it was like, hey, he brought the Bears to the Super Bowl, now he'll turn around my you know, my college team. Maybe we bought in too early. Maybe the second relationship will we'll date for a while before getting engaged. You know, I've written about this many times. Illinois will have good years and then bad years and then good years. There's no real, like, this was better and then got better the next year and then got better the next year. And so that's the thing I think that fans are looking for. Thanks to Robert for his time. To watch our entire conversation, head to our website, WCIA.com. I know and hope Ben's back and he's he's back in the saddle. Illinois has a new coach this season with Sean Snyder stepping in as special teams coordinator for Ben Miller while he continues cancer treatment. An update on Miller ahead as the Your Line Nation kickoff show continues. Coach Brett Bielema joining us now in studio for the Your Line Nation kickoff show. Brett, we're going to talk some about this season, but let's start out with something fun. What does game day look like for you from when you wake up? Do you have traditions? What kind of things go into that kickoff for you? It, well, it depends on game time, right? Uh, I think everybody, and I know the fans don't love them, but I think if you ask players and coaches, they love the 11 o'clock kickoff, right? Because you just you get up and get rolling. But I usually just kind of just rehearse the game. A lot of times I'll put clips of a game that that aren't related to one another to make a new game right so it's a game that you've never seen before and kind of test your calls test your uh your moments of uh of football situations and all those things and how do you celebrate after a win i know you're always on to the next yeah did you, you, get, did you do something after wins I, I do i never really try to watch film on the day of the game you know win or lose um I, I learned it early on in my career to celebrate every win as much as you possibly can one of my most enjoyable things honestly is to leave the stadium uh, last year after Nebraska, I remember having that feeling, kind of just drive through uh, tailgating areas and see the people engaged, having fun, seeing with their families, and, and realize that 
it's more than just a football game. It's an event, and I think that kind of makes it full circle. You went three and nine your first season at Arkansas. You turned it around the next year, seven and six. I know every season is different, Brett, yeah. but what parallels, if, if any, can you take from just making that jump from one to two years? The, the big one for me is just the little indicators that you see every day in your building. Uh, we had an end-of-game situation the other day where one of the most important elements is to give the ball to the official. And Tommy DeVito the other day, we were running an end-of-half uh, scenario, and he ran and handed the ball to the umpire. Tommy has learned, right, through the process that we taught him to hand the ball to the official. And those are just little moments that, in the end, can be huge uh, moments in the, in the reality of a game. You said you wanted to be a developmental program. That takes time. Yeah. How difficult is it for you to be patient? And how much is depth a concern this season as you continue to build that? There's different types of things you can be, um, you know, uh, a little bit more lenient on how fast you need it done, right? But uh, there's certain elements that need to be done today. And I think as a head coach, I got to learn and, and kind of guide those things through my coaches. And then also players are different. You know, certain players can handle a, a mental load or a workload that other players can't. And, and you have to identify that as coaches. So that's my my challenge really with our coaches. And you're doing this for the first time, developing a program with a transfer portal. Yeah. What's the secret sauce? What's the recipe for finding the right transfer players? You know, it, 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 it there is a... There is an element to it that we were really, really guided in. The key is to find the special ones that fit our bracket, that fit our terminology, and to fit our, our place cards, and then uh, hopefully find out if they're good players on top of it. We've heard you talk a lot about situational football. It's kind of your MO, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's what you do. Has your philosophy changed, though, in that at all? You know, Brett, it's, it's, it's really about the player, right? Like, uh, you know, I know everybody wanted to have a hot topic about fourth downs last year. Well, I, I know in particular um, two games, our ability to call something on fourth down was greatly affected by the ability of what players we had available. But I think situational football wins close games for sure, right? And uh, a year ago, we, you know, were involved in my opinion, ten games that could, you know, could have gone either way. Um, a lot of those games got down to who handled situational football the best. You make the decision to move on from Tony Peterson after just one year. What does Barry Lunny bring to the table that you're excited about that fans will see? He allows our players, I think, to think less and act fast. Um, I think that anytime we can slow the game down for them, which allows them to speed the game up physically, that's a positive. So I, I really like his demeanor. He's got a great sense of humor. He's a great fit to our room. So I think that common denominator uh, really has helped our football team overall. Last question here for you. What will define success for you this season? You know, I think uh, I say this all the time to our players, right? Like as a head coach, I've always got something on a vision down the line, uh, you know, ahead of where we're going. But if we can improve daily, right, if we can get better during the course of the week to get ready for Saturday, uh, if we're in, if we're better in game six than we were in game five, um, that defines success because it allows you to move forward. Um, and and I think our guys really, for the first time, they really truly understand what I'm talking about, uh, and mean it, and understand it, and process it, and that's when it's special. Thanks to Brett for his time. To watch our entire 20-minute conversation, head to our website, WCIA.com. After our final break, we're back with a look at how one of the oldest players in college football is embracing his role in Orange and Blue. Plus, there are now eight players on the team from the WCIA 3 viewing area, and several have a chance to see the field this season. Illinois special teams coordinator Ben Miller will not coach this fall on health-related leave as he undergoes treatment for colon cancer. Miller was diagnosed in February and has already completed four months of chemotherapy. He will have another round this fall that will keep him from coaching. Sean Snyder takes his place on the sidelines. He comes to Champaign from USC, where he spent the past two seasons in the same position with the Trojans. The special teams unit is set to look completely different this season. Gone is last second legend James McCourt after three years as a starting kicker for the Illini. And as well, the Australian punter Blake Hayes moves on after five seasons, placing opponents inside the 20. Now it's up to a new face to take on the punting duties, but it's one that may sound the same. There are a few things Melbourne, Australia native Hugh Robertson has trouble understanding in the U.S. Tipping, I can't get my head around that yet. The driving, the drive. When I go up to Chicago, the drivers are, uh, wow! I can't. They wouldn't get away with that sort of driving in in Australia. That's for sure. Sometimes the 29-year-old even has trouble relating to his teenage teammates. I definitely find my ways. They're probably a bit young for Crocodile Dundee. But one thing that does make him feel at home: kicking a football. 
The former Aussie rules football player follows in the footsteps of another after Blake Hayes recorded five All Big Ten seasons in orange and blue. After a short career in law enforcement, Robertson had the urge to give sport one last go. Out of high school, I was in the army for a year. I decided it wasn't for me and um, moved into the police force for another challenge. Uh, and then I did that for about eight years. And then this opportunity came out of nowhere. On a recommendation from a friend, Robertson left his career and tried out at Pro Kick Australia, a program that pairs former Aussie footballers with college teams in need of punters. After two years on the bench adapting to the new game, he's already getting back positive reviews. Our last scrimmage on Monday, you as a punter, handled that moment as good as any time they have so far since I've been here. Right now, you know, Hugh has been putting the ball pretty well. I think they're going to be in a pretty good uh, place by the time we get to season. I'm just going to keep playing uh, for as long as I can enjoy, enjoy it. And right now, I'm absolutely loving the new game. And as long as the body still stays together, this is just an opportunity of a lifetime. So for me, this is what, what I want to do right now. The all-new specialist group could be the difference in close games for the Illini. Aiden Hall, the long snapper, with Danville's Caleb Griffin finally getting his shot to kick in his fifth year. And Griffin is one of eight Illini on the team this season from the WCIA3 viewing area. He'll be in the starting lineup along with his former Vikings teammate, Julian Pearl. He will suit up at left tackle. Another set of former high school teammates are now in orange and blue. Gibson City, Melvin Sibley's Bryce Barnes will be in the rotation on the defensive line with fellow Falcon grad Aiden Lawfrey looking to carve out a role as a true freshman. The last time they suited up together for GCMS, they won a state title at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I had the same conversation with Bryce about it. I was like, man, like... Last time I played on it, we won state together, man. And like we're gonna come back out here and play Wyoming. It's definitely surreal. It's awesome. I can't I can't wait for the opportunity. So it's just been different. The expectation is like you're supposed to be the guy now. Like there's higher expectations for me every practice, every day. That's what I came here for. I came here to be the guy. So it's really awesome to have that opportunity now. Other local guys on scholarship include true freshman Rochester's Hank Beatty and Iroquois West grad Clayton Leonard. All right, it's almost time for kickoff. Here's the matchup Wyoming and Illinois at 3 o'clock Saturday on BTN. The Illini once again playing one of the first games of the college football season in week zero. Illinois about a 10-point favorite over the Cowboys. That'll do it for the Your Illini Nation kickoff special. For Andy Olson and Bryce Beeman, I'm Brett Behrens. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. This has been your Illini Nation kickoff show, a special presentation of WCIA 3 Sports, sponsored by Blue Sky Restoration and Longview Bank.